Hi everybody, my name's Karen Boniker and I'm a painter master and I'd like to introduce you to this new brush pack called Watery. If you've been using painter for a number of years, you'll know that it's full of wonderful brushes. And although I can call out each particular brush and give you an explanation of how to use that brush, it's also important to note that brushes don't necessarily have to be used for what I'm showing you. So you can always feel free to branch out and explore these brushes in other ways as well, from adding texture to skin, to um, creating ripples on the water, to creating beautiful clouds. So there's all kinds of ways that you can work with these brushes. And what I'd like to do now is kind of go through them, show you how I use them, and get you started. The first brush we're going to take a look at is called the Big Watery Blender. And this one is a blender brush, and you will note that by the reset setting, which is on the property bar. <clears throat> the reset is set at 0%. So it means instead of adding saturation or paint, it's going to blend existing layers or existing paint. Now you can do that on the canvas layer or you can do the blending on any layer as long as it has pixels evident on the layer. So I'm going to be using um, the brush on a new layer and I'm going to be using the option called pick up underline color. So when I start using it, it's actually going to blend what's below on the layer below. Okay, so that's important to note here. Now what I might want to do and how I would use this brush is if I wanted to create maybe some taller waves in the front here or just do some blending of clouds and you can see how it's very expressive in, in terms of the way it um, picks up the pixels and kind of moves them. Uh, if I wanted to I could also use a much larger brush here and if I do that you'll see how it affects those uh, existing pixels. So you know, I might be creating larger waves or I might want to create that a larger wave effect here. And you can see that I'm putting firm pressure on that brush and what I'm doing is actually uh, pulling it up from the bottom to create the face of the wave. So back here in the distance, you know, I might want to use a smaller brush to control that effect. And then in the foreground area here, I might want to use a larger brush to create, to create a larger face on that wave. Okay, so that is the Big Watery Blender. The next brush is called Reflective Water. <clears throat> and uh, how I would use this one is usually with a light color. I need, you know, probably pick up a color from the sky and go with a lighter value and then choose that to just put in little reflective qualities uh, on the ocean in the background. Or you could use that for a lake, uh, something like that. That would be quite effective. Um, let me use a darker color here to actually show you what the stroke looks like. So it's kind of a uh, reflective uh, brush dab. So the best effect to use that would be, you know, with a light against dark value to create the look of waves in the distance. Or you could even use it for little reflective qualities in tide pools, something like that. The next brush is called Ripples. And this brush again, um, we'll go ahead and get a nice bright color here. And this one uh, I tend to use uh, overall you can see that it's a, a large brush stroke. Uh, it's, it's really nice for creating distant waves in the background 
or if you're creating a scene that you want to um, show light and dark values of that particular uh, body of water, such as a lake, and you want to really enhance the ripples in a lake in terms of the colors. Um, and let me do this. So a lot of times in a, uh, a lake scene, for example, or a, a large water scene uh, out in the ocean, the deep ocean, you can start with a base color and then use a lighter color to put in those reflective patterns. And in the foreground, you're going to have larger brush strokes, so you just want to work with a bigger brush stroke and pull those in. And then as you go back in the distance, those strokes are going to get smaller. So you can show the feeling of, of depth and distance. Nice and big in the foreground. And you can see how that light against dark creates that reflective quality that's so reminiscent of the open ocean or a lake with a breeze coming in where you're picking up all these different values of color and light that's being reflected off the water. So that is the Ripples brush. The next brush is called Rocky Beach, and you'll notice that I use that pretty extensively in this foreground area here. And um, I love this brush. Uh, it really is a brush where um, you can create some really beautiful um, rocky effects. So I like to use it relatively large at first, and it's always good to uh, work with different colors. Remember that this brush can use apply dab stencil based on paper, flow map, or texture. Um, and we'll go ahead and disable that right now, take that off so we get a better view of how this brush lays down um, the rocky formations. And if you want to create the look of a tide pool, you would sample the lighter color and then go ahead and dab that color in. Sometimes picking up the color from the sky is a good idea. And then a darker value surrounding it. And then with very light pressure, you can go back through that area and blend it softly as well. So it's really a lovely brush for uh, this effect. And then bigger brush, and create that rocky appearance again. And then soft pressure, you can just blend. nice rocky beach. Rough Water um, is another um, fun brush and let's go ahead and reset that to default and let me show you how this brush works. And we'll clear this out. And this one I like using uh, using it to create the look of clouds up in the sky. It really makes some beautiful clouds or uh, and when you press very softly with it you can blend the edges out or you can use it for the effect of white caps and rough water out in the ocean or a lake. It'll work very nicely for that as well. And you'll notice that in the original painting I used it right in this area to create the look of some clouds in the background. So you can see that you know these brushes can be very versatile. You can use them for lots of different things. And that's uh, one of the one of the wonderful things about working with painter brushes. 
Uh, spray is exactly what it says. Um, it's a brush to evoke the look of, uh, you know, uh, ocean spray um, on a wave. And um, I like using it also for just little reflections in the water. So if I use it very small, um, I can use it to create that kind of sparkle effect that you see out on the ocean. It's also nice to use it uh, at the base of a of a um, a wave to show that kind of foamy effect. And something like that, and just let it add some extra texture. And you can also use it, um, this is a nice effect, is to use it at a smaller brush size uh, to create the look of sand along the beach. So that's another option you have with it. Beautiful kind of textural effect. Okay, watery blender is um, one of my favorite blender brushes in this group. Um, it not only will blend certain areas, you know, if you're looking to, uh, you know, soften edges or do some blending along the edge of your uh, water plane, like a lake or a river. But it can also be used in another way, and let me show you that. And the other way to use this would be to use it to create trees. And how you would do that is select the reset option and bring it up, and then just start from the bottom and pull up, and you'll create these really nice um, lacy trees. And you have almost a zen flair to them, which I really, really like. So that would be another use for this brush. You can use your shift key and just drag down to create the basic start of the brush or the tree. And then using a little bit firmer pressure, you can go back into it and create these really nice, lacy looking trees. Okay, the next brush is called Watery Clouds. And I definitely use that brush right up here in the, in the area of this painting where I painted in the clouds. And I'll show you how to use that brush. And we'll clear this out. And um, so with firm pressure, you're going to get lots of saturation. So adding firm pressure to your stylus, OK? Get a natural, very natural looking cloud formations. Now open the size of the brush up a little bit bigger and use very soft pressure. And if you want to blend your edges and soften your edges of your cloud, then you can do that as well. This brush is a plug-in brush, liquid brush. And um, I think you'll, be, you'll really enjoy creating clouds with this brush. Swap a darker color at the bottom and blend. And there you can see how you can create some really, really lovely cloud formations for your landscapes. 
Okay. The next brush is Watery Pastel. And this one is the basic brush that I used uh, to create the sketch that I started off with this painting. So it is a, just a nice pastel chalky type of brush that you can use for sketching and uh, it's always a, nice to have a brush like that included in a pack like this where uh, especially if you enjoy doing some of your own um, uh, sketching to create your start of your paintings so it's a it's a lovely brush for that effect okay the next brush is called uh, watery sky and this is a brush that I use for the background here. Um, if I show you how to use it, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go into this existing layer here. And uh, you know, you can use any color. We'll reset it to default here. And you can use all different colors and strength setting here because it is a drip brush and you can see how it just blends beautifully. Okay, so that is Watery Sky and the next brush is called Watery Sparkle and we'll go back to our original here. Actually, I'll show you that brush here. It's a sparkle brush uh, soft pressure and you just get a little bit of sparkle and firm pressure you'll get a nice um, heavier look to the brush okay watery sparkle watery waves is the brush that I used here to to form some of the wave shapes so this brush is <clears throat> a drip, grainy drip uh, brush, so um, you can use it on a layer anywhere where you want to paint into your existing painting. Add some value to add color. You want to paint in some wave that's coming over, you know, folding over the top and breaking. This is a great brush for that as well. Like here, I might, using some firm pressure here, I'll paint in a, this wave and the feeling of that it's kind of folding and breaking. and soft pressure with this brush and you can blend with it. Okay, so that is Watery Waves. The next brush is Wavy and we'll go to the sample here to show you that one. And this one, <clears throat> let me show you how this works. This is a dab base brush and it actually creates a look of waves. So if you were wanting to start off a, a painting with lots of waves in it, then this would be a good one to use. Remember that you can go to your uh, brush settings and uh, use things like spacing to space this out a little further. And again, it has the option for reset and bleed so you can also blend with it so if you wanted to soften some parts of this of the waves maybe back into the distance here and then it would also be a good point where you could use um, the previous brush the watery wa waves and you could use that to build up um, you know waves in your painting create a beach break or um, pick up a nice sand color and use that to paint in. 
It's a really nice, fluid, watery type brush. The next brush is Wavy. Uh, wavy, we went through white caps. We'll look at. And that one is uh, really nice for just creating the look of white caps in the distance. Big Wave is one of my favorites, and we'll go ahead and we'll keep the white caps there and go in with this and start to create some big waves. And you can see how uh, using this, <laughs> you could have a lot of fun creating waves with this. Um, I usually start off with soft pressure and build the face of the wave. This is how I work with this brush. And once I get the face in, then I start putting a little more pressure on the brush to create the curl. And then remember that you can go with a smaller brush to get more control. So if you're looking to fill in some of these areas or even create another, um, you know, another wave coming in here. It'll give you some of that control. Got to give up a little bit of control with this brush because it it really, uh, just remember when you get that nice firm pressure of your stylus on this brush, this is where you really get the wave moving and you get that real shape going. Um, you can use it uh, for clouds in the sky. Um, you can use it for texture, uh, but it really does a nice job for uh, waves and you can see that, that I use that pretty extensively uh, to create and build the waves in this painting. So thank you for letting me introduce to you this beautiful brush pack called Watery. I hope you enjoy using it um, as much as I have. Enjoy. Take care.